Well, hey everybody, I'm John Rithlin with my review of AHS 1984 Episode 7 titled The Lady in White. Not to be confused with the 1988 film Lady in White, the very obscure, odd, duck, ghostly movie that was not scary enough for adults, but too scary for kids. It was an odd PG-13 movie. Have you seen it? Let me know in the comments what you thought. I don't know too many people that have seen it, but that that's the title that's what the title reminded me of however the episode is completely different so this is much more of an origin story of camp redwood and what happened and was 1970 the original massacre let's find out if you've seen the episode and you're just wondering what you know my opinions are then you already know so we start off with 1948 camp golden star and we have lily rabe i think that's how you say her name i apologize if i got that wrong who has been in previous American Horror Story seasons in very fabulous roles, if, if you recall. She's very, very good and has been great in a lot of the roles that she's had. And she's a mother at, uh, at you know, Camp Golden Star, which would later become Camp Redwood. Uh, she has two sons, Benjamin and Bobby. And she's yelling at Bobby because she wants, you know, Bobby to watch her, watch his younger brother because she loves Bobby more, Benjamin, it's Jingles. It's Jingles and his brother. That's what it is. And this actually is much more, again, of an origin story of how everything came to be. And, well, uh, Benjamin decides to spy on the lifeguard and uh, another counselor getting it on in the woods and getting splinters in places that they probably shouldn't, you know, uh, they probably didn't know they had and they probably didn't want to know they had. And, oh boy, that's got to be difficult to get those splinters out of there. But splinters in inappropriate places aside... Bobby is on the dock and decides, hey, I'm going to go swimming. Well, there's guys running, uh, you know, a boat with a motor. And, oh, yeah, he gets chopped up and dies. And, you know, the mother blames, uh, the mother blames Benjamin. It's like, you know, he was my favorite. What the hell? How could you? Oh, my God. What is this? And, you know, really, really good performance by her. And then we get to, uh, we go to present day, uh, Donna and Brooke. Donna had, uh, Donna, Dee Dee, you know, Nurse Rita, whatever you want to call her. She had freed, um, Brooke from basically captivity, brought her back from the whole lethal injection thing. And she's trying to help her get her strength and her sanity back and give her a new life and this kind of stuff, trying to make things right. And even though Donna has, you know, a family steeped in evil, especially with all the stuff her dad did, she's trying to escape that. Even though she's done some bad things, she's trying to make it right. Brooke's like, you should just let me die. And then we get a bit of a montage of like, you know, hey, she's trying to help her, this kind of stuff. And then Brooke sees this um, newspaper clipping. Margaret's trying to open, you know, it's going to have a music festival at Camp Redwood. She's like, that bitch took my, you know, took five years of my life. I want it back. I'm going to go back there. And Donna's like, no, you can get a new life and everything. Forget about it. It's not worth it. Uh, she, you know, Brooke's upset. She missed out on the rest of the 80s. They go to a skate, you know, a skate club park thing, whatever. And they run into a guy named Bruce, played by Dylan McDermott, who was great in earlier seasons, especially Murder House. Murder House was probably my favorite role that he had, even though he was good in another season. And you know what season I'm talking about. Um, he He's talking to him about wanting to ride and everything and go see his girlfriend. And, you know, they say, no, no, okay, we got a no stranger policy. Well, Donna does. And then uh, the next day they can't get their car started. He fixes it up, loose distributor cap. They figure it out. And he's like, okay, never mind. I'm going to go off and do my stuff. And she says, ah, you know what? Hey, come along with us and stuff like that. And then they suddenly pan to a um, missing person thing about a bunch of women that have apparently gone missing. And it's Bruce. It's Bruce that's causing the whole damn thing, by the way, in case you can't figure it out. Um, so, yeah. Uh, later, you know, he's telling some stories about dangers on the road and this kind of stuff. They're kind of getting creeped out. So they're like, you know what? We've taken you far enough. Go ahead. Get out, you know, get out on the highway here or get out on the street. Walk to wherever your girlfriend is. And after a little bit of banter, cop suddenly says, well, hey, you know why you guys pulled over here? Well, I'm going to need to see some ID. Well, then he shoots the cop. After he gets out of the car, they take off. So Brooke and Donna abandon him. The cop gets killed. He gets in the uh, police car and it's a reenactment of the hitcher, basically. Um, the good or the bad one, take your pick. Um, then suddenly Mr. Jingles shows back up at the camp and everybody that he's killed basically faces him like the copycat guys that he ended up killing or, um, you know, so many others, like, you know, previous characters, Montana, Xavier, you know, people that he has terrorized, uh, Chet and everybody, they suddenly, you know, have him tied up and stuff like that. And they're like, you know, hey, we're you're really dumb for coming back to this camp and everything with a whole bunch of ghosts and a whole bunch of killers and this kind of stuff. And you're the reason that we're here. I mean, you and Margaret, 
we got caught in all this stuff and we're going to kill you. But first, this whole music festival, we're going to kill other people. We're going to kill everybody there. They're going to bring paranormal people here. And then maybe they can figure out a way to set us free. And then Jingle suddenly says, no, I know what the deal here is and let me explain it. And they're like, well, you know, he's, he's like, well, let me explain this stuff. I mean, what's going on? Because they explained a little bit before that they're terrorized by a lady in white. He knows who the lady in white is. It's his mother. Again, played by Lily Rabe, or however you say her name. And really fabulous in this goddamn role. Really, really good, by the way. And he tells the story of Camp Golden Star, that stuff in the beginning, that kind of stuff about how his brother died, and his mother did, started the original massacre. His mother was the one that did the stuff in 19, like 1940 and 1950. She just did all this killing, this kind of stuff. And 10 years later, it was opened up as Camp Redwood, because it was shut down after that. She tried to kill Benjamin, stabbed him in the leg, and then was going to stab him otherwise, and then he got the knife and killed her. So now the uh, death of his brother, even though it wasn't his fault, is haunting him, and he killed his own mother. So that's going to be a lot of shit to deal with as a kid. Um, it's amazing he ended up more fucked up like earlier in his life. But um, suddenly he explains, well, hey, you know, take me to where this lady in white is. Nobody wants to. And Cody Fern, who plays Xavier, they say, well, hey, why don't you go there? Well, okay, fine, I'll go there. And he didn't want to go too close because she keeps terrorizing everybody. So, you know, Jingles goes there, talks to the mother. She explains how, you know, Bobby was always her favorite, that she hated him, she blamed him for his death, and she's going to do everything she can to torture him. So we get a bit of a backstory and this kind of stuff about how she was. She saw how him and Margaret interacted, and she decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to fuck with him, because if she cares about him and, she, and he cares about her, I don't like him, I don't like this son, I'm going to screw with him. And she encourages Margaret to go from the good to the evil side and cause the massacre, and Benjamin is just like, you know, why? Why would you do that? You don't think that, you know, uh, Bobby's death has haunted me. So a lot of stuff steeped in family tragedy and everything. And then we go back and then she disappears. So we get that. And then we get Donna and Brooke um, are waiting at a traffic light. And then suddenly a cop car hits him. It's Bruce in there. And then, you know, they wake up a little bit of time later. Uh, Donna's tied up, you know, back, like chained behind the truck a uh, bit back. And Bruce gives Brooke a choice. You either drive ahead, you know, kill your friend, skin her alive, that kind of stuff. It describes all the stuff that could happen. And you save your and you save your ass, even though he's got a shotgun aimed at her, so he's clearly gonna kill her after she kills her friend. Or um, I kill you and then kill your friend. And she decides, well, yeah, da, da, and then she suddenly hits hits it in reverse, slamming him into the window. And then Donna manages a duck. She gets under there, and then Brooke ends up shooting him in the leg with her gun. And they end up, you know, capturing him because they overtake him as far as the numbers. And also the fact he had a bullet wound in his leg. And then um, <clears throat> back at Redwood, we get a uh, bunch of artists arriving, like Kaja Gugu. Uh, and, you know, Trevor sees Montana while this is going on, everything. And Trevor, not realizing she's a ghost wanders off they end up making out a little bit later you're making out with a ghost nothing like it i guess rumor i don't know um brooke you know back with brooke and donna brooke decides to cut off the thumbs of bruce and basically leave him tied to a post to bleed to death which i guess is fitting because he has done a whole lot of killings and then we go to uh richard saying to kaja gugu hey by the way back at redwood you make a pact with the devil you should re really should read the fine print or a contract he kills him and everybody else that's in the goddamn uh tour bus which was kind of cool. Well, everybody gets found dead a little bit later. And then we get Jingles and his mother talking. He talks about how his <coughs> wife died, but he has, you know, a son named son after his uh, younger brother. And he just wants his son to have a better life. The mother gives him a choice says, Hey, Ri if Richard kills you, you know, since you're human, if Richard kills you, the whole pack of the devil thing, if he kills you, you'll be cast into hell. You won't be brought back. If you kill yourself, you'll come back from heaven. And then you could fight him, I guess, somehow. So he ends up killing himself because he realizes that he's kind of fucked and that the only way really to save his son is to kill himself. So really, that's where the episode ends. There's two more episodes. I hope that this thing finishes strong. I'm a little bit leery as to how things are going to go. It lost its way for a little bit sometime in episode five and then especially in episode six. Maybe it can regain um, its composure and be good by the end. So we'll see. we got two more episodes. We'll see what happens. But let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.